Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Ironwatch RX8004. This watch is available on Ironwatch store on AliExpress for €358. Euro. The RX8004 is available in two versions, the PT5000 version or alternatively the SW200-1 version. This is the PT5000 version. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with the piece. So the RX8004 comes in a watch box which is protected by this black cardboard outer sleeve and this is the watch box itself. As you can see, finished or high standard, very aesthetically pleasing and I like it. With regards to other items, this is the owner's instruction manual that comes for the watch. Clear concise diagrams and it's also bilingual, it's translated into both English and Mandarin. It details the operation of the two movement options, the PT5000 and the SW200-1. This is the plastic guarantee card. Now, usually at this price point, I would expect a low tier watch costing €358 Euro to be only covered by a 12 month international guarantee. However, I'm pleased to report if you purchase this watch from Iron Watch Store on AliExpress, it is covered by a 24 month international guarantee, which is very reassuring. As you can see, the guarantee card is filled in with the reference number of the piece, the serial number, and also the date of purchase. With the watch, one also gets this very high quality aluminium bodied Julius screwdriver. I liked the nylon rotating head. As you can see, it fits into the palm of one's hand, so one can use one's index finger and thumb to rotate the knurled shank. So tool steel tip, which is anodized, as you can see, 1.6 millimeter tip for resizing the screw pins in the bracelet. So it's nice to get a high quality professional grade of screwdriver included with the watch. And lastly, one also gets this Iron Watch plastic tag. So good attention to detail, good presentation throughout, and I like the accessories that come with the watch. So with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Iron Watch RX8004. The watch is clearly on a march to the Rolex Submariner 14060, so very similar proportions. We have a 39mm case diameter. Now the bezel is 40mm, so there's a slight overhang of the 40mm bezel, so it does wear like a 40mm piece due to the 40mm bezel overhang, but the actual case dimensions are 39mm. We have a lug to lug measurement of 48.6mm, a thickness of 13.3mm, and a lug width of 20mm. The Oyster style bracelet tapers from 20mm at the lugs down to the flip block clasp. Now as you can see, the flip block clasp is sterile. I would like to see Iron Watch engrave it and sign it with the Iron Watch brand emblem, but however, it is finished to a very high standard. Beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel. As you can see, the, the brass satin finishing is finished to a flawless standard. Flawless mirror polishing to the flanks of the flip block clasp and also mirror polish to the underside. Now there's no easy link extension and it doesn't have a glide lock style clasp either and these are things that I would like to see Iron Watch introduce to this flip block clasp because it is finished to a very high standard. Solid milled 316L grade stainless steel interior, mirror polish to the top side, underside and flanks. Now in the absence of an easy link style extension or a glide lock style clasp we have three dimples and that means that there's three positions of micro adjustment for the bracelet to fine tune the length. Personally, I would like to see Iron Watch lengthen the bracelet clasp and that would give four micro adjustment holes in the absence of an easy link extension or ideally upgrade to a glide lock clasp and that would really make this a much better system. But it does snap shut with a good positive click and there's a good positive secondary click to the flip lock. No sharp edges, it's well chamfered and deburred and no sharp corners to it, so it's a very well finished high grade of clasp. With regards to the rest of the specification, we have got a boxed top hat style crystal which makes a refreshing change from flat sapphire crystals and also double dome sapphire crystals. Iron Watch deserve full credit because they've got the balance correct between the vintage aesthetic of a 14060 Submariner but with modern day enhancements. For example, the boxed top hat crystal is made from sapphire rather than plexiglass and therefore it's more scratch resistant. They've also used a ceramic bezel insert which is the correct choice because the aluminium bezel insert as per the 14060 Submariner would be less scratch resistant so it's the perfect balance. The top hat box crystal gives it a vintage look, but the ceramic bezel insert gives it modern day specification. 
With regards to the dial layout, it follows the classic Rolex Sabarina dial layouts, very well executed, silver applied indices, which complement the silver Mercedes hands. Now, interestingly, they haven't gone for the contemporary maxi dial layouts with larger applied indices. This has the vintage aesthetic of the 14060, which this is an homage to, because the applied indices are smaller than the maxi dial larger indices. And I think that adds to the aesthetic. It does give it a vintage characteristic which complements the boxed top hat crystal. Clearly legible, good dial layout, and I like the fact that dial isn't over-branded with unnecessary text or specification. We simply have the Iron Watch brand logo at 12 o'clock, the water resistance rating, which is 200 meters, and then automatic at six o'clock. I like the contrasting white chapter ring, and it really is a very well-executed dial, matte black, and the clear AR coating on the underside of the box top pack crystal does an excellent job of reducing the glare and the highly reflective nature of the silver applied indices and the silver Mercedes hands. With regards to the crown, it's solid 316L grade stainless steel. I like the pointed profile of the crown guards. It gives it the look of the 14060, which this is an homage to. Coin edge finishing to the crown now. Mirror polished dome cap, but as you can see, it's unsigned. And this is something I would like to see Iron Watch improve upon. I would like to see an Iron Watch emblem or Iron Watch engraved or embossed on the crown because that would finish the piece to perfection. Let's test the crown action. Absolutely silky smooth. This is 10 out of 10 very well executed crown action. The PT5000 movement has a characteristic pop which pushes the winding stem out of the movement when one unscrews the crown. So in the first position it's in the manual wind position and one can manually wind the PT5000 to top up the power reserve to its maximum 40 hours. Absolute pleasure to manually wind it and one can feel the tension in the mainspring gradually building up. Now as the PT5000 is a date complication piece it does have a phantom date setting position. In the first click, it's the date setting position. So pulling it out to the second click is the time setting position. And as you can see, the movement has hacking. I've now hacked the second hand, so one can stop the second hand dead to set the time precisely to the second. Absolutely silky smooth. The PT5000 feels very similar to the SW200-1, alternatively the ETA2824-2. So it's an absolute pleasure to set the time. Pushing it back in, it's got a nice positive click, and that restarts the movement. So let's test screwing it back down. Good firm resistance to the PT5000. The winding stem is very spring-loaded, and it feels more spring-loaded than an SW200-1 or an ETA2824-2. It feels more similar to a Seiko NH35A, which you will all be familiar with. So one has to give it a good push to engage the internal thread of the screw down crown with the external thread of the crown tube, but immediate thread pickup, silky smooth to screw it back down, and the crown provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters, which is very good. So very well executed crown action. Let's test the bezel action. 120 click unidirectional bezel, as one would expect. Good firm resistance to it. It feels very similar to a Seiko SKX007, alternatively a Steinhardt Ocean 139, if you're familiar with those. I like the firm resistance to it. The bezel clicks feel very solid, good, loud, crisp clicks. I like the loud, audible sound of them. They feel even all the way through the 360 degrees of rotation. No lateral side-to-side -side play whatsoever. No back play whatsoever. This is a good, tight, solid bezel action. The ratcheting mechanism feels firm. I like the firm resistance of it. It feels solid and reliable and it's very satisfying. It feels similar to the San Martin SN017G or the SN019G, if you're familiar with those. It's got a very similar bezel action to San Martin, which I like. So let's just check the alignment. Absolutely perfect. So perfect alignment, no lateral side side play, no back play. This is a very well executed bezel and a very well executed crown execution. So let's look at the case back. Solid 316L grade stainless steel case back, and as you can see, it's completely sterile, perfectly flat, it's relatively low profile, coinage finished to the circumference of it, and we've got the concentric tool marking of the lathe cutting. So, absolutely gorgeous finishing to it, perfectly smooth against the wrist, so therefore very comfortable to wear for long periods of time. So, I like it, it's a low profile, comfortable flat case back, which provides an effective hermetic seal to 200 meters. The solid end links are a good tight fit to the case and the finishing to the underside of the case, the case back and the end links is all done very well.
So I'll give you a wrist shot so you can see how it fits on my 8 inch wrist. Now having sized the bracelet I've simply taken the watch out of the watch box and I'm pleased to report that it fits my 8 inch wrist to perfection with no sizing whatsoever. I can fit an index finger underneath the bracelet and clasp at all, so at all times which is the correct sizing method and as you'll know from my previous reviews I like to size my bracelets loose to allow for wrist expansion when active or when in warm weather. So. This is the perfect bracelet. I like the proportions of it. 20 millimeters tapering down to the flip block clasp. Beautiful luster to the 316 l grade stainless steel. No sharp edges, no burrs to the bracelet, and they've done an outstanding job with the brass satin finishing. So as you can see, on wrist, it is an incredibly aesthetically pleasing piece. The feel good factor is 10 out of 10. The comfort level is also 10 out of 10. The lug to lug measurement is close to perfection. 48.6 millimeters is close to the sweet spot of 48 millimeters. And as you'll know from my previous reviews, I consider 48 millimeters to be perfection. So at 48.6, it is very close to perfection personified. The 20 millimeter lug width is the perfect bracelet width, which balances the 39 millimeter head of the piece. So as you can see, although it's 39 millimeters, it actually wears more like a 40 due to the 40 millimeter bezel. The proportions are absolutely perfect. So I love the taper of the lugs and also like the large chamfer machined on the top edge of the lugs, which marks the transition between the top of the case and the flanks. Beautiful grained finish to the tops of the lugs, which adds to the vintage aesthetic of this being an homage to the Rolex Submariner 14060. So they've got the balance just right between a vintage piece and a contemporary looking piece. The ceramic bezel insert perfectly complements the box top hat crystal as you can see I love the way the top hat crystal projects above the ceramic bezel insert so it's just a gorgeous looking piece very comfortable piece to wear it's 155 grams with all the links in the oyster style bracelet now as you'll know from my previous reviews I consider circa 150 grams to be the sweet spot for a 40 millimeter piece so this is 39 millimeters and at 155 grams it is a very good weight it gives a feeling of wrist presence and heft, which gives a feeling of comfort, but also quality on wrist. But it's not top heavy. It's a very well balanced piece, so it's comfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as 8 to 12 hours per day. At 13.3 millimeters, it does easily slip underneath a shirt cuff if you wear business shirts. So it is a ideal daily wear piece. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged and as you can see, it has not disappointed. This is top grade BGW9 Superluminova. I'm absolutely delighted that Ironwatch haven't cut any corners with regards to the quality of the BGW9 Superluminova used. As you can see, it's glowing incredibly bright, brightly and it's also continuing to glow for a good length of time. So this is what five or six layers of BGW9 application looks like. Although the applied indices aren't the maxi dial version, they're not enlarged as per the Submariner maxi dial. They have a smaller loom plot as per earlier Rolex Submariners, such as the 14060. They have definitely applied five to six layers because as you can see, the color match between the Mercedes hands and also the applied indices is perfect. They have the exact same blue tone of BGW9. Also the loom pip on the ceramic bezel insert has the correct color match between the applied indices and the hands, all glowing brightly and all continuing to glow for a good length of time. Really I don't regard there to be any difference between the quality of the loom used on this iron watch and the quality of the Rolex Chromalite loom used on my Submariner. It glows exactly the same blue tone, it's the same brightness and also it will continue to glow for the same length of time. So Ironwatch really deserve full credit because they are using top grade BGW9. It really is absolutely beautiful. Now, personally, I would have preferred them to use C3 Superluminova rather than BGW9 because as this is an homage to the 14060, I think it would suit it better having a vintage aesthetic of green colored loom rather than the blue tone of BGW9. But however, this is subjective for the majority of collectors. They will like the contemporary look of Rolex Chrome Light as per this BGW9 Superluminova. So as you can see, it's still continuing to glow brightly and it's very well executed. I really like the quality of the loom. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favorite aspects of the piece. So as I've discussed, 
The RX8004 is available with two movement options. One can purchase the piece with the PT5000 or alternatively the SW200-1. So is it worth paying the extra for the SW200-1? Well, that's subjective. It really depends on one's personal taste. I like both movements. I regard the PT5000 to be equal in quality to the SW200-1. Personally, I don't think it's necessary to pay the extra for the SW200-1. I think the PT5000 is perfectly adequate. So the PT5000 has been in use since 2015. It's made by HK Precision Technology in China and it's effectively a clone of the ETA2824-2. The quality and the architecture of the movement is identical to the ETA2824-2. It has 25 joules and it runs at 28,800 vibrations per hour and a frequency of 4 Hz. The movement has hand winding and hacking which is for complications, a 40 hour power reserve which is perfectly acceptable. Now the stated accuracy of the PT5000 is plus or minus 12 seconds per day. However, I'm pleased to report that Ironwatch are regulating the PT5000 movements they're using to a very high standard. This one is running consistently at plus 4 seconds per day, which is outstanding. So really, there is no need to upgrade to the SW200-1. One is getting plus or minus 12 seconds per day from the PT5000. This one is running at plus 4 seconds per day. The build quality, the quality control, and also the materials used in the PT5000 are exactly the same as the SW200-1. The only difference is the SW200-1 has an extra joule added to give it 26 joules rather than the 25 joules of the PT5000. But other than that, the architecture of both movements is the same, the quality control is the same, the accuracy is very similar. So I would say to you the PT5000 is the correct choice for this piece, one doesn't need the SW200-1 but it is subjective, you have the option of upgrading if you personally prefer the SW200-1. So no negatives to the movement whatsoever, I can confirm that the movement used in this watch is made by HK Precision Technology. Now there are other Chinese factories producing the PT5000 but the original is made by HK Precision Technology and that is the better version of it because the movement movements coming from HK Precision Technology are well lubricated, other factories making the PT5000 sometimes don't lubricate the PT5000 as well and then they have problems. So very well regulated, very well lubricated and I'm pleased to see Ironwatch offering the two versions, PT5000 and also SW200-1. So lastly I'll summarise the piece, what do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch will meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So with the PT5000, the price point is €358. Euro. Yes, I consider this to be excellent quality. And yes, I consider it to be excellent value at €358. Euro. This is an outstanding piece. There are three elements that I look for in a watch when I am weighing it up. It should have excellent quality loom, excellent bezel action and excellent crown action. They are the three criteria and I'm pleased to report that this piece exceeds my expectations. As you've seen in the loom test, the BGW9 Super Loom Nova is excellent quality. The bezel action is excellent. The crown action is also excellent. So it has those three elements confirmed. Overall, the quality control, the finishing and also the materials used are Outstanding, beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel, no sharp edges to the clasp, no sharp points, very well finished. So really there are some minor improvements that I would like to see Ironwatch uh, introduce. I would like to see a signed crown and also a signed flip lock clasp and also introduce either an easy link extension or alternatively a glide lock style mechanism. But these are minor points. The rest of the watch is outstanding and I wouldn't change anything about it. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money and I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Iron Watch RX8004. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.